Hello and welcome to this video. So in this video, we're going to be talking about the squeeze term again, but we're going to be doing two very kind of weird or odd kind of examples. I say odd because they tend to kind of mess up students in how you approach the squeeze term, but they're not too bad. And once you see how I kind of approach these examples, they're probably the hardest version of the squeeze term problems you could probably get on an exam or something. So with that being said, if you kind of get these examples, it's not too bad. So let's just kind of jump right into it. So I'll be covering two examples in this video. And then after the two examples, if you have any additional kind of requests as to specific questions I should, I want, I need, you want me to do or something, uh, feel free to write that in the comments and I will get right on that. Okay, so let's get started. So the first example we're gonna do is a really kind of strange question. So we're gonna be doing the limit as X approaches zero from the right, so this is a one-sided limit of the square root of x of sine squared. So let me just write that write that a bit better. So sine squared of pi over x. Now the reason it's zero from the right is because well this because of the square root. The square root of function is only defined when x is zero or bigger. So of course, if we had zero from the left, that would make sense because the domain isn't defined for when x is less than zero. Okay, so once again, I can't just plug in zero because we get pi over zero and that's undefined. So we have used the squeeze term once again. So let's go ahead and write down our inequality. So this will give us minus one is less than or equal to sine of x, which is less than one. Now, if I go ahead and change the inside of this to pi over x, well, that's not going to change the inequality in any way, yeah, I, like for the outside portions, I mean. Now, the squaring. Remember, this inequality is kind of the definition of the range of the function. So, this is, so for reference, this is sine of x. Kind of looks like that. But if I'm squaring it, well, that means that this negative portion of the graph doesn't exist anymore because any num any number squared or any real number squared for the matter is always a positive number. So as a result, if I square the sine of pi over x, that minus one is not going to be true anymore. So it's always going to be zero or bigger. So the range is going to be range go from zero of sine squared pi over x to one. It's not going to be one. And the reason for that is because we're not checking the domain of the function. This inequality represents the range or a set of all possible y values. So if I square the sine function, well, for example, if, si if x equals, well, 1, sine of pi is 0. So as a result, at minimum, this can be 0, but it, can't, it still can't be bigger than 1. That's impossible. Okay, hopefully that made a bit of sense. So let's keep going. Let's can erase that. Okay, so it's between zero and one now, so that's not too bad yet. So now I gotta multiply both sides by the square root of x. So I get zero is less than or equal to the square root of x of sine squared pi over x, and the square root of x times zero is of course is well zero, and that's gonna give us the square root of x. And then we take the limit as x approaches zero from the right of, well, all three of these points, or the inequality rather, is less than or equal to the limit as x approaches zero from the right of the square root of x sine squared of pi over x is less than or equal to the limit as x approaches zero from the right of the square root of x. Okay, well that's going to give us, well that's going to be zero obviously. The middle uh, limit, well we don't know that, so I'm just going to write this down. So that's going to be the square root of x, sine squared of pi over x, and this limit, of course, if I plug in zero, regardless if it's from the right or add zero, I can't take it from the left, of course. Well, that's, oops, sorry about that, it just suddenly zoomed out. So this limit right there is going to be zero. 
So as a result, well, according to the squeeze theorem, this middle limit right there, well, according to the squeeze theorem, this limit is equal to zero as well, because this limit is equal to zero and this limit is equal to zero. So the middle limit also has to go to zero. Now, you might be tempted to say that all these limits are going to be zero. That's not true. You got to be careful. Like If this limit was equal to pi over 2, and this limit was equal to pi over 2, then this limit will be equal to pi over 2 as well. You can't just say that the limit is going to be always zero whenever you use the squeeze term. That's not really accurate. And you can't just say, oh, well, I'm multiplying zero by something, so the limit has to be, well, zero. Well, no, it's not true because this limit is undefined. So although you might be tempted to say, oh, but I'm just going to kind of guesswork this on an exam. No, no, you, you can't really do that because on an exam, they might try to trick you and use things like tan or something, which even at infinity and whatnot, it's not always, you know, undefined or, or, or something. Or arctan, arctan of infinity is pi over two. So you got to be really careful about like, different kinds of trick functions. So in this case, of course, yes, it's zero, but don't generalize this and say that all trig limits are zero. That's not, that's simply not true. Okay, so this one seems easy at first, but it's not that obvious. So let's go ahead and do this limit. So the limit, as x approaches infinity, uh, as, uh, as x approaches infinity of sine of three x, over x. Now note we didn't talk about infinite limits yet. We will do that in the few videos, but I still wanted to go over this example just because this one is this is one of those limits where well if we approach this very willy-nilly, it's gonna get really bad. So what is an infinite limit? An infinite limit is just something I plug in, I literally just plug in infinity. So for example, one over infinity is equal to zero. Oh, well, or more, pro oh, let me just actually, that's not really correct. So if I say, to, for example, the limit as X approaches infinity of one over X, well, that just essentially says what happens when I plug in a really, really, really large value. So for example, in this case, one over a large value, so infinity, well, that's equal to zero because the denominator gets really big. One over a really big denominator is, of course, well, zero. So it's kind of the same idea here. For example, if I plug in the limit as x approaches infinity of, well, x, well, that's just equal to infinity. So that, that limit doesn't exist. And we'll do this more in depth, but I really just wanted to kind of hammer in the point in the in this kind of example this is because a lot of students confuse this so for example the limit as x supports infinity of 1 over x squared well that's going to be 1 over infinity squared but infinity squared is just, it's just infinity and that's going to be equal to well of course zero so hopefully you see the basics of what an infinite limit is. Now, that being said, we will talk about this more in depth when we actually get to the proper topic. But I wanted to make that emphasis in this question because limit approaches infinity, not zero. That's really important in this kind of question. We'll talk about, we'll see why that's the case in just a moment. So I'm just going to go ahead and erase all of this because we don't need any of this. And if you have any questions about this example, please let me know in the comments. I will obviously try my best to answer. Um, but that being said, let's uh, move on. Now, you might, be to tempt, you, you might be tempted to say that this limit is equal to 3 or 1 over 3. Because you might be saying, oh, wait, well, I, I, I can just use the identity that oh, sine of x over x equals 1. Uh, uh, but uh, but you can't really do that. Well, first of all, there is no x, there is no three x there, so you might be tempted to go, oh well, you have a three x on the inside of the sign, so I can just multiply this by three over three, and that's going to give me sine three sine of three x over three x, and that's going to give us well a three. That's not true. You can't do that, and the and the reason you can't use this kind of identity for the limit is because, okay, the reason you can't use that kind of identity is because uh, of a very simple fact. That, 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 that identity only works if the limit uh, approaches zero. So that limit, so the limit as x approaches zero of sine x over x is one. But notice the limit approaches zero, not infinity. 
Zidu. So as a result, you can't use that kind of identity on this limit. If you could, well, you know, that'd be a problem. But the lim because the limit approaches infinity, you can't really use that limit. So we have to think of something else. So we could just use the squeeze term again. So let's go ahead and do that. So we know for again that sine of x is between minus 1 and 1, so there's nothing too maddening or crazy there. So if I go ahead and substitute in a 3x on the inside, well, that's still going to be between minus 1 and 1. And if I divide both sides by x, well, that's going to give me sine of 3x over x is less than 1 over x. And then if I take the limit as x approaches infinity of every single direction, So if I just go ahead and write this all down once again, uh, and then one more. Okay, so if I go ahead and evaluate this limit, so what's minus one over a really, really big number? Well, it's a really big denominator and we're going minus one over that. So essentially minus one over something big, that's zero. So this limit is unknown. We don't know what that is. Okay. And then this limit, well, it's one over something really, really big. So one over something really, really big is, well, that's again zero. So as a result, this limit is again equal to, well, zero. Now, you have to be very careful. If this limit is equal to zero and this limit is say equal to, I don't know, one, you can't say that this limit is equal to zero. This limit actually wouldn't converge or anything. So you couldn't conclude what the limit was as a result. So this, this, this so as a result, the squeeze term only works if both these limits at the end are exactly the same. If they're not the same, you can't say what the limit is as a result. Okay, hopefully that made sense. If you have any questions at all, please let me know in the comments. I will respond as quickly as I can. And if you if this video helped you, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. In the next video, we'll be talking about the intermediate, uh, sorry, not the intermediate value theorem. That's the next topic. So the next video, we will talk about continuity. And after continuity, we will talk about the intermediate value theorem. And with that, we have just, a, and after that, we have more or less wrapped up what a limit is, or what limits are, to be honest. And then after that, we'll talk about asymptotes, and then we can move on to derivatives. So with that, I will see you in the next video. See you then.